this is a sad day. It's a sad day because nobody comes to Congress to impeach a president of the United States. No one. So the speaker should follow her own words on what bipartisan vote on that floor and in the sham that has been putting this country through this nightmare. The House has officially approved procedures for an impeachment inquiry into the President of the United States. The vote of 232 to 196 was largely along party lines. Two Democrats did join Republicans' objections to moving forward. And in a rare move, Speaker Nancy Pelosi presided and participated in the vote. Joining us now with his thoughts on the vote and the next steps is Republican Congressman Jody Arrington of Texas, a member of the House Ways and Means Committee. Congressman, thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. You bet. You Absolutely. bet. Good to be with y'all. God bless Texas. <laughs> That's right. So, <laughs> sir, tell us a little bit about your reaction to this vote. I mean, you obviously, of course, voted with yeah. many of your colleagues. Um, and, and what do you think you're going forward? Are you satisfied with the procedures, quote unquote, now? No, I, I, there's an old Texas saying, uh, putting lipstick on the pig. I think uh, this, this still smells like a pig, still sounds like a pig. It's, it's not open. It's not fair. It's not the way impeachment proceedings have been done in the past. So I think uh, whatever pressure the Democrats were feeling to tee this up again, it's still controlled by Chairman Schiff. Um, there's not appropriate counsel cross-examination and just equal sort of powers and checks from majority to minority like they've done it in the past. And I think with something as serious as impeachment, uh, you got to get the process right. Uh, and, it, and it isn't right. And it hasn't mm -hmm. been. So this doesn't change anything for me. And um, and, uh, of course, I have other issues, but from a procedural issue, uh, this is, this is, uh, this is a, to me, a, a purely political process. It's, it's been a secret in inquisition, not really a formal impeachment proceeding. That's my, that's my mm. position. Well, talk about maybe some of your other issues, as you put it. What do you make of the underlying allegations here and specifically what was revealed in the transcript of that phone call between the president, uh, between our president and the president of Ukraine? Well, there have been lots of uh, things that were leaked out, uh, but they were selectively leaked and they were second, third, fourth hand. The only first hand knowledge and primary sort of evidence has come from the conversation between the two presidents. And I, I see no quid pro quo. Um, I, I see a president in his own non-politician style uh, trying to ensure that uh, taxpayer monies are going to be spent uh, in the way we intend them to be spent and that graft and corruption would be rooted out and that no rock would uh, go uh, unturned, so to speak. And so uh, people may feel uncomfortable with the way the president talks. Again, he's not a politician, but I, uh, I have no problem with it. In fact, mm -hmm. I think with the history of Ukraine and I think with some of the public uh, nature of some of these uh, conflicts of interest and other issues, I, I think he did the right thing to, mm -hmm. to, uh, to call attention to it, to say, hey, if there's something there, figure it out. Nobody gets a pass. And if not, then, uh, you know, just do your due diligence because... Uh, this is a lot of money, and we're bearing most of the freight. The European countries aren't doing yeah. their, their share, and I know that's another issue. Congressman, I also want to ask you, there's a lot of wish casting by a lot of Democrats and some people in the media about, oh, Republican defections. Now, given the fact that, what, not a single Republican actually voted with the Democrats, now that if, if this were to go to the Senate, would you expect, I mean, just tell us the mood amongst the caucus about the defense of the president, in your view. Well, I think uh, most of them share my sentiments that I mm -hmm. just expressed. I think on process for sure, uh, I don't think anybody feels good about the way this has been run. Um, I, I think it feels like more weaponization of our oversight. In this case, it's impeachment. It uh, feels way too political, and um, I don't think there's comfort across the board. I don't think there's any anybody that would share a different view on the Republican side. And, and obviously there are a couple of Democrats that feel that way because they voted against it. A couple of them yesterday. Mm -hmm. uh, one of them was the chairman of agriculture, a uh, guy I worked with in my first term. But uh, yeah, in terms of uh, the president on the allegation itself, I, I think it's absurd. Uh, I don't think there's, I think it's baseless uh, personally. Uh, the money, by the way, the money was given to Ukraine, so right. there was really no quid pro quo there. Um, but, you, you, you know, I don't see any movement, but uh, 
Uh, I can't speak for my colleagues. I can only tell you that I, I think this is, uh, this is baseless and political. In do, you, um, do you agree with the president's characterization that that phone call was, quote, perfect? <laughs> well, um, I think it was appropriate. I think it was, uh, and I would go beyond appropriate, and I've said it before. I commend him for being a fiduciary and actually caring about how much we pay to support our allies relative to others, like other European countries, who have even gr a greater interest in in, in Ukraine than, than we do. And I think it's important that, uh, in fact, it's the law, and we've passed several pieces of legislation that says you can't give these countries money, and specifically Ukraine, because of their history of corruption, without ensuring that they have controls in place, they've got accountability measures in place, and that they're doing everything they can to root out graft and corruption. Again, that was the whole premise of the conversation. Remember, Zelensky talked about at the uh, outset of the conversation, draining the swamp. He said, I want to drain the swamp like, like you are. And, uh, and I think that sort of uh, uh, bringing, you know, chasing out the corruption uh, that plagues that country and, and, uh, and compromises the confidence of their people is something that, uh, you know, that, 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 that he was looking to President Trump, I think, in, in a way that's... Uh, as a leader in that regard. So I found it to be more than appropriate. I thought he, he did the right thing. Mm. Well, thank you so much for joining us, Congressman. Sit tight. Uh, we'll be, we'll be back with you soon. Next you on Rising, it. Democratic candidates have two and a half weeks to pay for $1,000 fee to register their names on the primary ballot. Friend of the show, political reporter Paul Steinhauser joins us to tell us what the campaigns look like on the ground in New Hampshire when Rising continues.